Hello and thank you for being here today as we announce the expansion of the Health One program. When the Chief and I and others were able to announce the original Health One, I predicted at the time that every community would want one and I think that's coming true. Uh, one of the best things about being mayor is being able to stand before you on days like today to announce a program that is community-based, in high demand, gives back to the community, um, and the weather doesn't hurt either. Just about a year and a half ago it was that the Chief and I stood with former council member Sally Bagshaw and others to announce a pilot program where the city would have another resource to respond to mental health and behavioral health crisis for our city's most vulnerable residents. We are looking at new models to address non-emergency 911 calls that involve substance abuse, non-emergency medical issues, and a need to access services and other crisis calls. That pilot program was Health One, modeled a lot on our Medic One, which led the nation in response to heart attack and other medical emergencies. And the city, since the launch of that program, has been able to better serve the city, especially our neighbors experiencing homelessness. Health One's implementation also freed up our first responders to focus on immediate public safety needs like structure fires and vehicle collisions. Well, today I am so proud to announce that another Health One unit is ready for service. This second unit will allow Health One to serve the University District and Ballard. Unit Two will be stationed at a fire station two in Belltown, which allows the downtown core and Capitol Hill to be included in its service area. But it's really up to the crews, the professional team on board that can respond to any area throughout the city. Starting on Thursday, Unit 2 will be in service Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Between both units, the city will now have full weekday coverage. Both Health One units will have the same staffing and equipment. Two specially trained firefighter EMTs, an aging and disability services case manager with the Human Services Department, and an SUV equipped with all the necessary medical equipment plus outreach resources such as food, drinks, and clothing. Health One has allowed our city to shift away from police-led 911 responses. As we work to reimagine policing, this model is one of the tools we can use to increase safety in our communities. We really did this based on the data that we were seeing when I came in as mayor. We saw call after call where someone would call 911 for someone in behavioral health crisis. Police would be dispatched to the unit, but there'd be no criminal activity and didn't really require an armed police response. Police have very limited tools. They would either able to de-escalate and send the person on their way, arrest them if they committed crime and take them to jail, or if they're in a very strong behavioral health crisis take them to Harborview. So many more options needed to be present and this unit and Health One have shown that they can come and see what that person needs. Chief Scoggins, I want to thank you. I want to thank the fire department for all of your support of this. Throughout the pandemic we have asked this fire department to step up in ways that were new and different to serve our community. First it was Health One in advance of the pandemic but then it was, how do we set up a testing program? And it was our firefighters who were on the front lines of going in to our senior homes and the like. Then we set up our vaccination program. And each time we've asked them to step up, they've done it. Um, before I hand this off to Chief Scoggins, in light of that, um, I have a very important thing to announce today. Last year on April 1st, 2020, it was not April Fool's Day, Chief Scoggins met his fifth year anniversary of service as fire chief of the Seattle Fire Department. As you can imagine, at that time we were midway in the pandemic. We were all trying to figure out how to handle the crisis, who could do what, and how we all did our jobs differently. But as mayor, we're typically able to recognize key milestones for people. So chief, it's a year late, but if you could come forward here, I would like to present you with the Certificate of Appreciation to Harold D. Scoggins in recognition and appreciation of his five years, I should scratch that out and put six years, of all the years excelling, loyal, and dedicated service to the Seattle Fire Department 
and the citizens of the city of Seattle. Chief? Thank you, Mayor. And no award in the city government is really an award if you don't have the pin to go with it. That's right. So uh, pin goes with it as well, though I will not try to pin it on you, Chief. All right. And with that, Chief, I'll turn it over to you and let you talk. Thanks very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And I must say that was a very nice surprise on a beautiful day. Um, yeah, it's been six years, and wow, what a six years it's been. You know, I want to thank our mayor because, you know, when we start talking about this idea of how to better serve people in the community that were in need, not of a 911 EMS, ALS type of response, but people who just needed help, you know, this idea really took off with our mayor and council member Bagshaw. And, you know, in November 2019, we were so excited to see the program launch. But so many people played a part in getting this program off the ground. You see, uh, a number of our council members here who have been amazing partners to the Seattle Fire Department, thank you for your ongoing support. It's been a great deal. Our partnership with Local 27, Vice President Jeff Miller's here, has been absolutely incredible. Um, our partnership with Human Services Department, Aging and Disability Services, really came together. That's interdepartmental collaboration. Karen Heaney is here, and the case manager works on the unit with our firefighters. And then mostly our firefighters for being willing to step up and stand in the gap. As our mayor mentioned, we have done that a lot and the public has seen it a lot over the past year. But this is another one of those areas that when our firefighters took the oath of office, little did they know the areas and spaces that they would be working in. And this is another one of those areas. So today is an exciting day announcing the second Health One unit going into service. And it will be going into service this Thursday on April 15th. And there's been so much work that's gone into that. And the, the most important person, the architect of this program, John Ehrenfeld right here, has really been, been the mind's eye in building this program up from the ground. And oftentimes we talk about a good hire, and John was an amazing hire. He's been here several years now. And, and we saw the potential of what we could do. The unit will be staffed with two highly trained firefighters and a case manager each and every day. And that interdepartment collaboration will be the key. Another big part of this program, because this is our second unit now, we now have 14 firefighters that are trained to work on this unit. Any given day, we'll have two on health one and two on health two, but the balance actually are working their operations assignments. That becomes very important for the community because now these highly trained firefighters are responding to the day-to-day -day emergencies and they can actually see when calls need to go a different direction because of the training that they have. In 2019, we were able to launch that first unit. This unit, we're expanding the bubble into the U District and to Ballard along with the downtown core. But what does that mean? That means we're also gonna be able to expand Health One a little bit further south into Soto and down in the Rainer Valley because now we have two units. But it's also important to note that over the last year and a half or so, every one of our aid cars that respond to emergencies each and every day, 90% of our engines, most of our ladder trucks, and almost every one of our ALS medic units have called Health One with a referral. And that becomes pretty important because those referrals are what really take people out the system. So they had eight, over 800 dispatches, but they had hundreds of referrals from our fire companies behind that. So when you see a heat map of where we actually responded to over the last year and a half, the heat map is really lit up in the downtown core. But you will see heat spots all over the city, even with that one unit. Since our launch, 56% of our clients that we serve have been unhoused. That's pretty important. So we are meeting people where they are and providing the service. 42% of the population we have served have been in public spaces. That's everything from uh, people in mental health crisis, people dealing with substance abuse issues, minor medical issues, um, social service issues, and we've been able to do everything from call a medic unit if you needed a medic unit, 
call a BLS unit if you needed a ride to the ER, but that's only equal to about 19% of our responses. We've been able to get same day medical appointments for minor low acuity um, medical situations, next day appointments. We've been able to give people a ride to shelter, provide blankets, provide foods, um, connect people up with their social workers, help them get their medications. All this provides a healthier lifestyle and get people back on the path that they need to be successful. So I'm really proud of the work that our team has done on this program. Thursday is an exciting day getting the second unit uh, launched, but later in the fourth quarter of this year, the third unit will be launched, so the work will continue. But none of this would be possible without all of the partnerships, without our leader, our mayor, believing in the direction that we're going, without the support of our, our, our city leadership with our council. All that's been really important for us, and also with our partnership with labor. So as I wrap up, I would like to introduce Local 27 Vice President Jeff Miller, and in pretty much everything that we do, it's been a great partnership with the local to make it work. It's all about relationships. Thank you. So my name is Jeff Miller. I'm a vice president of the Seattle Firefighters Union, IAFF Local 27. I'm also a full-time firefighter. I work at Rescue One down at Station 14 in the Soto neighborhood. Uh, Kenny Stewart, our president, he couldn't be here today, and so I stand here uh, representing over a thousand Seattle firefighters and paramedics to applaud the expansion of the Health One program. I want to thank Mayor Durkin for her leadership in prioritizing public safety in Seattle in support of the Health One program. I want to thank Fire Chief Scoggins and John Ehrenfeld for their management of this critical program. But most of all, I want to thank what we call boots on the ground. And that's our firefighters and social workers who are responding to a vulnerable population and delivering, uh, hooking it up with the services they need. Uh, Health One is a solid, common sense program. And the reason it's effective is because of our firefighters who from day one have been on the streets uh, responding to our homeless, our mentally ill and drug addicted population. So inclusion, uh, Seattle Firefighters Local 27, we're excited about the expansion of Health One. Uh, Health One, it's a common sense program it prioritizes public safety. It delivers the services to the people that need them, and it's effective. So, uh, excited about this new program, about expanding our program. Uh, thanks for your time today. And I think John, you're next. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is John Ehrenfeld. I'm the program manager for Seattle Fire Mobile Integrated Health. Um, so Health One Success is founded on being a multidisciplinary team. Our firefighters and our case managers bring a really diverse set of skills and techniques to every single run that they go on. Um, and consider this recent example. Um, instead of Engine 25, Health One responds several times for a client who's fallen out of his wheelchair while transferring. While the firefighters assist him up and check for injuries, the case managers gather information about his services and his benefits. Following these responses, the team contacts other case managers who serve him as well as his care providers to assist with a search for an ADA-optimized apartment and a new electric wheelchair. On the next response, they check in with the patient, discuss his changing care needs, and emphasize the benefits of moving to this apartment. The firefighters follow up with the SFD crews in the client's area to keep them up to date. This is a very typical response, and it just goes to show how far above and beyond a standard EMS response um, the Health One crews bring and, and just what they bring to every single response. Um, we're able to field a team that does such in-depth work uh, for our clients because of our strong and very long-standing partnership with the Human Services Department, Aging and Disability Services Division. ADS links the fire department to long-term care, homelessness services, mental health, and more. And their case managers really are the glue that hold our team together. 
I think that this partnership is what allows us to put the integrated into mobile integrated health. We're really enthusiastic about expanding. We're enthusiastic about expanding to reach more clients and really look forward to this program's growth. Uh, and we're fortunate to be joined today by the crew from Health2, our firefighters, and one of our case managers uh, who will be available afterwards to answer some questions. And lastly, of course, thank you to uh, Mayor Durkin, to City Council, the Fire Chief, Human Services Department, Local 27, Local 17, and of course, all of our MIH staff. Thank you. Thank you, John. And this program would not be possible without the full support of City Council. Um, I think if we had every City Council member here who supported it, we would have to have a meeting because of the Open Public Meetings Act. But we're very fortunate to be joined by three of the strong leaders for this. And the first one will speak is the council member who represents this district, Council Member Peterson. Good afternoon. We know we need to expand our response to people experiencing homelessness and distress on our city streets. Expanding Health One is a smart and compassionate response. And so I applaud Mayor Durkin, Fire Chief Scoggins, local firefighters union, Local 27, and their teams for expanding this proven pilot program that combines firefighters and case managers from our human services department to prevent more expensive and dangerous situations throughout Seattle. As the council member who represents the University District, I can say our shared goal here is a more effective intervention that proactively links each person in crisis on our streets to the essential mainstream services they need, rather than reacting and sending them to expensive emergency rooms. Expanding Health One will enable our highly capable and compassionate city government professionals to connect more people with the help they really need so they can start thriving instead of just surviving as we emerge from this COVID crisis better and stronger together. Thank you. Just a second. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Dan Strauss. I'm the council member from District 6, Ballard, uh, Green Lake, Fremont, and many other sub neighborhoods. I want to first uh, start by thanking uh, President Stewart, who could not be here, Vice President Miller, Chief Scoggins, the mayor, my co council colleagues, and Council Member Bagshaw, as well as Allison Wright. Uh, for making this program happen. One of the reasons that we're here today is because, as the mayor noted, uh, it was maybe 16, 20 months ago that we had the pilot program for Health One launched. So the pilot has been running for uh, the last uh, good amount of time, and this concept has been proven. The proof of concept is complete, and this is our opportunity to expand Health One to be Health Two in the fall, Health Three, and I will tell you here and now, I will be excited to be uh, providing the budget, budget dollars needed for Health Twenty Two. Um, John Ehrenfeld made a, a remark and told a story today that was very illustrative of the work that Health One does. What I want to kind of focus in here is when we don't have Health One to call, we send a fire engine, a medic, a police officer, an AMR to transport them to uh, an emergency room where the underlying issue that is that the reason 911 was, was called in the first place is never addressed. That person is returned to where they, wherever they have come from only to likely call 911 again in several days. What Health One does sending two firefighters and a case manager to the scene. We are creating efficiencies in our first response. So we are sending the right first responders. We're sending them in one vehicle with a case manager and we're allowing them to follow up with the clients that they work with into the future. So not only are they being more efficient with the service delivery on the first call, they're reducing future calls that are needed to 911. When I had the opportunity to do a ride along with uh, Health One, I got to watch as the team navigated the resources needed for an individual who uh, had signed up for rehabilitation services. 
and had been staying in a motel and was now out of money and would have to be on the streets for the next several days until he was able to get into rehabilitation. Health One found him the services that he needed and a place to stay while he was waiting to, to get onto a better life. So I've already talked about the cost, cost efficiencies of sending one Suburban rather than a number of different vehicles. I've already talked about the, the ability that this program creates to reduce future 911 calls. And I want to just focus in that when we're able to allow our case managers to work with firefighters, they create lasting solutions. And these health units, Health 1, 2, in the future 3, and soon 22, are the resources that we need to address public safety and provide public, uh, public safety resources to everyone in our community. Again, I want to thank Chief Scoggins, President Stewart, Vice President Miller, uh, and from the team that I got to ride along with, Chris, Teresa, Roger, and Donna for having me on your team. I, again, look forward to the expansion later this year, and thank you for everyone who has participated in the success of this program. And uh, we now hear from Councilmember Hubrell, who is chair of Public Safety Committee, has from the very start been a very strong supporter of not just this program, but this approach uh, and the fire department in general. Councilmember Hubrell. Hi, I'm Lisa Herbold. So much has already been said uh, and said so well. I want to, of course, thank Chief Scoggins, Local 27, um, the case managers with uh, Aging and uh, Disability Services with the Human Services Department. Um, my colleagues on the council really appreciate hearing former council member Sally Bagshaw's shout out a number of times. Um, she really owes um, a, a debt of gratitude from all of us for helping get this started. Um, and again, appreciate that the mayor included funding for this unit um, in last year's budget. The council added to the budget for the next unit that we're going to be seeing expand in the fall. Um, and this is just really the direction that we need to move forward. Health One is an integral part of our crisis response. It is needed now more than ever. The expansion of this program to include Health Two today and Health Three later this year means that more behavioral health calls can be directed away from an armed police response towards providers that are much better capable of assisting individuals in need. The fire department previously reported to this type of 911 call with a fully staffed engine, ladder, or aid car. Yet, not even half of the time do 911 calls for, uh, for the Seattle Fire Department need that kind of response. Last week, I was able to experience firsthand how an immediate response by a team of case managers and firefighters was able to better contact an individual with necessary care and services, very much like the uh, scenario that, that John described today, very, very similar type of, type of, type of circumstance, uh, this one with, with a happy ending. Um, and um, I just want to also say that uh, I echo um, Chief Scoggins' thanks to John. When John uh, left the room when I was visiting Health One this week, last week on Thursday, everybody sang his praises for being the architect, for doing the hard work, for crunching the data, um, and making sure that the, um, the capacity that we were adding was matching, again, what the, what the need is. Now that we've added capacity for Health 2, we need to update our dispatch protocols to expand its use. I've talked both with Chief Scoggins and, and Mayor Durkin about this. Currently, most calls for wellness checks and behavioral health crises are still held by SPD uh, within the 911 dispatch system. Chief Scoggins is absolutely correct, though, that there are a lot of non-911 referrals that um, Health, 1, Health 1 takes, and we want to see more of that. Um, while SPD, the Seattle Police Department, has a crisis intervention team, they have crisis response um, teams available, Health One is a needed response that does not involve sworn officers. Today's work is part of the city's overall strategy that also includes our partnership with King County to fund the Downtown Emergency Service Center's mobile crisis teams, our support of the Seattle Police Department's community service officers, and investments in critical community incident responders, uh, 
the program operated by Community Passageways, to monitor safety in high-risk areas and respond to incidents of violence in partnership with local law enforcement. Health One and Health Two and these other programs right-size the response so police and fire can focus their resources back to the core functions of law enforcement, and we can lessen the strain on these valuable resources and reduce the likelihood of the combination of an armed police response and individuals in the throes of a behavioral health crisis that can lead to deadly and tragic outcomes. Thank you. Hand it back over to the mayor. Thank you very much. Again, I just want to emphasize, um, I think what you're seeing is this model came from what people saw as a deep need in our community. And now we need to scale this and other similar models up as quickly as we can. We know what community needs. And we know we need a range of responses to the crises in our streets. Um, I, when I came in as mayor, we saw that the, of the top five places where police and fire were responding, three of them were uh, homeless shelters. And having police and fire respond with that kind of response or to someone downtown in behavioral health crisis was not only inefficient because you would have some of the most expensive response our city can have, but we weren't getting to the right results. We weren't necessarily helping the person who needed the help and diverting them to a place they could be helped. So I am so proud of this program. I want to thank John again. I thought I gave them an impossible task when I sat with the chief and said, we got to get a different program, a different response. Um, and John went to work. He got the data. It shows that it takes some time. You know, we've been in this pilot for a period of time. We needed to get all of the kinks worked out. We needed to know what responses worked. We needed to train the people. But now we're ready to expand it. Um, and very thankful the city council has also authorized a third unit. I think hopefully the budget next year will, will have even more than that as we scale a range of community-based responses to what we're seeing in the city. So I just want to thank again city council. John, thank you for your work. Chief, for, for the union, I couldn't have better partners. I, you know, I gave that pin to the chief. I should have given it to the whole fire department in many regards. This year has been phenomenal. The number of lives they've saved through the testing program, through our vaccinations. And then every once in a while, there's the fire response and the emergency response and the health one response. So we've asked them to do double and triple time. Um, and I couldn't be more proud of their response. Any questions? See, it's so good you don't even have questions. Vaccine questions. All right, Mark. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, so the state's going to be expanding uh, eligibility on Thursday, and apparently there's 150,000 people on the city of Seattle wait list for a vaccine. So now that the J&J has been pulled, what is the city, what do you want to tell people for this week about the vaccine in Seattle? So a couple of things on that. Thank you for that question about vaccines. Number one, if people can get an appointment, they should get vaccinated as quickly as they can. Um, we are taking a pause, as, as recommended by the CDC, on the use of Johnson & Johnson. I want the public to emphasize there is a very small number of cases and over 7 million um, doses. And so they are looking at the evidence to make sure that there isn't a broader program problem. So we are going to take the pause. It mostly impacts our mobile teams. Um, but we will not be using Johnson & Johnson in our vaccination sites. We'll be using either Pfizer or Moderna. I will also say we still are not getting enough doses. And to everybody who's on that list, I know you're frustrated. Keep checking back. Um, we will notify you when we get openings. And if you have other opportunities to get vaccinated, take them. I was on the White House on the phone with the White House, and my office was on the phone with DSA with the Department of Homeland Security and others, and HHS trying to get us more vaccines. So we are going to continue to try to do that. Uh, heard the problem of vaccine hesitancy. I mean, is this just going to adding to it? What would you say about that? I think that. I think people now have really educated themselves through this pandemic on what they need to do, at least in our city, in our region, what they needed to stay, do safe and to trust science. And I think this shows that science is looking at the data, taking a pause when it needs to. But we had millions of doses that have been, you know, vaccinated throughout the country. People should not be hesitant. Um, I do know that we still need in our city and across the nation to make sure that we are getting vaccines to the people that need it most. 
and that we ensure an equitable distribution of vaccines. Our communities of color suffered disproportionately through the pandemic, both on the economic side and on the health side. We have an obligation to make sure that the vaccine distribution gets to those communities who sometimes have language barriers or transportation barriers or they are hesitant because of their distrust of health care. And it's one of the concerns I've had that I've raised with the White House, that the pharmacy program is not equitable and that we need to ensure equity. And so getting those doses to Seattle will help in that. Is there any concern, though, that not having the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will create a bit of a backlog and, and create more need for the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine? You know, every time we, we take one of our tools off the table, it, it creates more pressure in the system. And it will be still a period of time before we have enough supply that everybody who wants a vaccine can get one. So obviously no one is happy about this. We hate to see these steps, but we're really fortunate that we have three different tools to use. And in Seattle, we use far more Pfizer and Moderna than we do J&J. &J. Um, will, we will have to retool. We'll have to look at the data to see if we can restart using that. Um, and I will trust in the scientists looking at that data. Have you heard anything from the governor in that respect? The governor's in the same place. They are they're looking there. They want to make sure that what we do is, is safe. Um, as you know, they're looking at the data, seeing which cities and counties need to be rolled back. Um, I want to say to everyone, I know you hate hearing it from me, I'm becoming the, the mayor that says it over and over again, but we're not done yet. We are not out of the woods. Please keep your social distance, wear your mask, don't have backyard gatherings, get vaccinated when you can. We can't afford to go backwards. Um, we need to continue in the fight. Our city has done so well. We have the lowest hospitalization and disease of any major city in America because people did what was really hard. And I know people are really tired. I want to thank everybody for your time. Again, I want to thank everyone here in support. And uh, I hope everyone enjoys this beautiful weather. Thank you.